Professor Yamanaka, it's a real pleasure meeting you. <laughs> How are you? Uh, very good. Very good. Well, I just uh, arrived from Japan uh -huh. yesterday, so I'm still in jet track. Ah, wow. But other than that, I'm fine. <laughs> and what's the scientific question that you have in mind these days? Uh, well, of course, we have, I have many questions. Uh, we still need to understand why we can make iPS cells. You still have to uh, understand yeah, this? Yeah, we're still <laughs> working on that. Uh -huh. A medical question? Uh, well, we really want to bring iPS cells to patients mm -hmm. in two ways. First, by uh, stem cell therapy, mm -hmm. and second, by drug discovery. Mm -hmm. So we have been working very hard to realize those two medical applications mm -hmm. of iPS cells. Because it, it's interesting, you're a physician. Uh -huh. How you move? into science and why? Well, I started as a surgeon more than 20 years ago. And uh, there were two reasons why I switched my career from uh, operation room to laboratory. First of all, I fi found myself not talented at all as a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> that is number one reason. Very honest. <laughs> yes, I'm very honest. And second, uh, you know, my father passed away when I was doing my residency, mm -hmm. and I couldn't help him at all. And, uh, I, and I also saw many patients which we could not help at all. So I wondered how we could help those patients suffering from intractable diseases and injuries. Mm -hmm. Not now, but in the future. So I, and I thought it should be science. So that's the second reason. That's the probably that's the main reason. Uh -huh. Wow! What you're saying is uh -huh. that medicine is limited. We can't cure everything, but exactly. through science uh -huh. is the key. We have a potential to help many, many more patients in the future, <laughs> not now. In 2010, yes, I was at NIH and I, I saw see. you giving a conference, okay. and I saw something that was amazing. I see. It was a cell of the heart yes. beating. Uh -huh. And suddenly you said a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. that was a cell of a skin. Yeah, exactly. Wow, exactly. that's what leads to the Nobel Prize that you mm -hmm. were awarded, but mm -hmm. also a huge expectations. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. how, first of all, how, how you get this? So uh, approximately 10 years ago, we uh, identified uh, a set of genes, set of four genes. Uh -huh. By adding tho those four genes into your uh, like skin cells uh -huh. or blood cells, we can convert your cells into stem cells. Stem cells which are very similar, almost uh, identical to embryonic uh -huh. stem cells. So we call those new stem cells iPS cells, induced pluripotent stem cells. Uh -huh. So once they become iPS cells, it's you, your iPS cells and my iPS cells, we can expand iPS cells as much as we want. Wow. Then we can convert iPS cells into any types of cells, like brain cells, heart cells, blood cells again, or skin cells again, wow. bone cells. So that's uh, what we can do with this technology. Wow, I mean you can do cell therapy. Exactly. So you can exactly. convert yes. mm -hmm. skin cells into any kind of exactly. cell to yes. treat diseases like, uh -huh. for example? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like, uh, like liver failure. We could help those patients by transplanting liver itself, organ. But in many countries, like in Japan, Organ, tr organ transplantation is very, very difficult because yeah. we have only a few uh, organ donors in countries like in Japan. Like my father, he passed away because of liver failure. Uh, but now we can make iPS cells from people like my father, from his skin or uh, blood cells. We can convert into iPS cells, we can expand uh -huh. and we can make tons of liver cells, hepatic hepatocytes, from his own cells. And you would inject these cells? In yes, the we could. Inside. We are still working on that. Yeah. But right. instead of organ transplantation, we can do 
cell transplantation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Because creating organs, I know it's not the main area, area mm -hmm. of your research, mm -hmm. huh? but we hear a lot about 3D printing, yeah. about the scaffolds, yes. even about human organs that and are built animals. in animals. In, in like pigs, yes. What do you think is the best strategy to create whole organs? Uh, well, <laughs> it's still very difficult. You know, right now what we can do is to make cells yeah. from iPS cells or any stem cells. But many scientists are working on making organs. So as you just mentioned, there are two strategies. One is to use 3D printer. So in that case, we use stem cells or uh -huh. stem cell derived uh, hepatocytes or blood cells as ink in 3D printer. So that's uh, one possibility. The other possibility is to utilize animal, animal uh -huh. body, like pig body, to make human like uh, liver or a human kidney in pig by using human iPS cells. That's uh -huh. the uh, alternative approach. Uh -huh. you, you said that your, your big achievement was 10 years ago mm -hmm. when you first reprogrammed mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to iPS cells. Mm -hmm. What has happened in 10 years? Uh, so m there were big expectations. I, I, the, the field has moved faster or slower? Y What's your view? Well, well, it's been much faster than I expected 10 years ago. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, in Japan, one vision scientist has already started a clinical trial using iPS cells for eye disease, more mm -hmm. precisely uh, for aged with age-related macular degeneration. Uh -huh. So it's already in clinics. Uh -huh. And I, I've heard there are other clin clinical trials uh -huh. that are thinking of Parkinson or other? Yes, yes. Many, many scientists have been working very hard. So uh, I have a, a big institute in Japan uh -huh. exclusively for iPS cells. And uh, one colleague has been working on Parkinson disease. The other, uh, has been working on uh, heart failure. So there are many, many candidate potential for iPS uh -huh. cell based cell therapy. And are they starting these clinical trials with people, no, not with animal models, no, not with people? They are now working on animal as a preclinical trial, but now they are trying to move from animal to human patients. Uh -huh. And of course you can treat uh, diseases with mm -hmm. stem cells, but mm -hmm. also injuries. Yes. No? Like yes. A spinal cord or yes. knee problems? Exactly. Yes. We, we are working on that as well. Uh -huh. Would this be maybe more than curing, like rejuvenate the, the body somehow? Because it, some, uh, sometimes it's the, the frontier between health uh -huh. and aging, mm -hmm. disease and aging. Is well, we, we are trying to rejuvenate a part of our body, like one organ or one tissue but not entire person. So uh -huh. that's not our goal. <laughs> uh -huh. But if you go one tissue after the other, uh -huh. it seems that we are gonna cure aging somehow, no? Uh, that's another question. Well, we cannot replace everything. You know, we cannot replace entire brain. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, brain has some limitation, probably 120 years. And I think that's the maximum for us to live. Yeah. 120? Yeah, yeah. What do you think about some people that are uh -huh. using sometimes your name and your research to say, no, no, we will be able to live 150 or, or 200 years? Well, well, that's not what I'm interested in. <laughs> uh -huh. I just want to make people healthier. And uh -huh. I want to make uh, elderly people as healthy as possible. Possible until uh -huh. they die. Uh -huh. So right now, many people cannot move by themselves, cannot run, cannot swim. Uh, they must be in bed. Other people have to help them. But we are hoping by using our technology, we can shorten that period so that many people can live in a healthy uh, uh, state uh, till the end. That, mm -hmm. That's our motivation. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm not interested in making our longevity much longer. <laughs> it's a different story. Uh 
uh-huh. improving life conditions. Yes, yes, uh-huh. quality of life. That's, that's the most important thing. Uh-huh. Would you say that brain is the big frontier? Yeah, brain is very difficult, still very difficult. We can replace part of brain, like uh, Parkinson's disease, but if you think about entire brain, it's too complicated. You know, uh, in many countries, in US, in Japan, uh, we are aging society. We are having more and more elderly people, and we are having less and less young people. So if you think about like uh, blood donation, after five or ten years, we will short on blood donation because we will have more and more patients uh, which who need blood transfusion. Mm-hmm. But we are going to have uh, less and less young people who can donate their blood. But we can now use iPS cells mm. by making uh, iPS cells from even from elderly people we can make blood cells from iPS cells. So we can potentially overcome many, many issues by using iPS cells. Wow. You can create blood from yes. someone uh-huh. and trans- make a transfusion to himself? We could do that too, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. I've read that iPS cells are good for diseases that depend on a specific malfunction of or a sp- to a specific kind of cell. Exactly. Diabetes, for example? Diabetes, yeah, we have been working on that too. You know, all we need is an insulin-producing cell. Huh. So we are now trying to make an uh, insulin-producing cell from iPS cells so that we could help those patients with, without injecting insulin uh-huh. every day. What about cancer? Cancer, uh, that's another uh, target. You know, we can now make immune cells, like lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, attacking cancer cells from iPS cells. Uh, By utilizing that strategy, we are hoping that we can treat cancer patients. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of Mm -hmm. iPS cells Mm -hmm. is that people can use their own cells. We could use patients' own cells, and also we could use uh, Uh, cells from other people, other donors as well. And uh, we can expand iPS cells as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's another uh, uh, potential of iPS cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've read that you recently are working Mm -hmm. with these donor cells because it has some benefits compared to the... Yes. Which which are... Well, ideally, ideally speaking, if we could make iPS cells from each individual patient, that's very good. But we found, as you can imagine, right now it's too expensive to prepare iPS cells from each, indi- each individual patient. And it takes at least uh, six months or uh, one year to prepare everything from each individual patient. Huh. During that one year, uh, some patients, like patients suffering from heart failure, they may die. They cannot wait for a year. So uh, those are the two very difficult practical or hurdles that we have, have to overcome. In order to do that, we have been uh, working on so-called iPS cell stock, uh-huh. in which we make iPS cells from healthy donor, healthy volunteer, not from patient uh, him or herself. Uh-huh. That's our uh, alternative strategy. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, so how do you see the field of Biomedicine. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it seems it's so exciting, all this CRISPR technology, IPSL yeah, 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 of the yeah, genetics. Yeah. What yes. do you envision for the next few years? Oh, next few years, uh, we hope many uh, applications will go into clinical trial in next five or ten years. Hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. And after that, I hope some, many of them will go to, will, will become a, 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 a standard treatment for many diseases. Uh-huh. Which ones do you think really are more promising? So uh, I would say in addition to retinal disease, uh, Parkinson disease is very promising. Uh-huh. Spinal cord injury is also very promising. Many other, uh, and also cancer treatment uh-huh. is very promising. Spinal cord injury? Yeah. So you think you uh-huh. will be able to repair the lesion? Yeah, and maybe that's what we want to achieve. I used to play judo, 
It's a Japanese、uh, wrestling, and I also I used to play rugby football, and many players, even now, are suffering from spinal cord injury from those、uh, sports.、Uh-huh. So and、uh, also I used to be an orthopedic surgeon.、Uh-huh. So I really really want to help those patients suffering from spinal cord injuries. That would be a so. Impressive situation. Someone who is not able to move、mm-hmm. that through science. Yes, can, exactly. It, it, it's like it would be a change of paradigm, no? Yes, yes. So you know,、uh, the motto of this institute, Gladstone Institute, is science overcoming diseases. That's our goal, <laughs> and I, I I believe we can do it.